All right, welcome everyone. Figured I'd do another uh, live session here while I have some time on this Friday afternoon, so feel free to join us. Ask your questions down in the live comment section below. So I figured we'd start off today's video just going over the latest batch of Matchbox Real Working Rigs that, shockingly, I was able to uh, find in store around here. It's kind of unusual finding a uh, new Matchbox. So, uh, emergency response videos. Hello, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining us. Trash Can Man says hi as well. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, as I was saying, we're going to just go ahead and start the video out with going over the latest batch of Matchbox Real Working Rigs. So as you can see on your screen right now, this is one of them, but it's been heavily customized by me. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of what you can do with one of these Real Working Rigs with a little bit of patience and ingenuity. Hi, Ben. Hi, Fortnite. Thank you all for joining us. So we'll take a look at him a little bit later. Let's go ahead and get started. So unlike the normal cases of real working rigs, these only have, I guess the correct terminology would be three new liveries because they're not new models. We've seen all of these before over the history of uh, real working rigs in one iteration or another. But I think probably the most interesting one is the one I'm putting together now, which I probably should do this on camera. That's kind of the whole idea, right? Uh, this is the crop sprayer. So we haven't seen this for quite a while. Uh, this was, I think, first came out in 2011, somewhere around there. So really, since the Real Working Rigs name and collection has been back, this is the first time we've seen it in a number of years. Obviously, the, the biggest aspect or functioning part is the spray bars, which are, well less than perfect on mine. As you can see, they don't even want to hold a pose. They just drop down. Um, but obviously this thing would, you know, fertilize crops, spray crops with, you know, pesticides, all those kind of things. Uh, it's not really based on any model in particular, like any OEM licensed one, but it is nice to have. It's kind of sort of close to scale. I guess if I, if I had to guess, I'd say it's somewhat close to HO scale. And when you're done with it, you can, of course, fold it up out of service when you're done. Um, these are supposed to fold towards the front. So you know what? I think what we might want to do shows you how familiar I am with this thing. Let's try it this way. There we go. All right, let's do it this way. So you can fold it up towards the front when it's driving or not in service. And I do like the fact that it has the little nozzles at the end, so if you... You know, if you really wanted to, you can detail the hose lines and such out with maybe some black paint, you know, maybe some red paint to highlight it around. It's a halfway decent casting. Um, from what I understand, there's only one of these that are going to be in the case. I don't know what the exact case assortment is because, like I said, unlike usually, unlike normal, where I would get my cases from J-Car Diecast, I actually found this in store. So I just picked up one of each. But there were only one of these, so I'm assuming that... Um, there's probably only one of these in the case. But anyway, this is the crop sprayer. The whole body itself is die cast. Obviously, your spray arms are plastic, your cab's plastic, and your wheels, of course, are plastic. But other than that, what do you guys think of this one? It's kind of unique to have this back. Looks like a few more people have joined the chat, so let me get caught up on chat here. Cool, I used to have older ones, but I don't have a farm, says emergency response videos. He says he might have to make one. Um, do you have the Matchbox Tiller truck? I do have the Matchbox Tiller truck somewhere. I have no idea where it is, but I do have it. Uh, all right. I think we're caught up. Let's go on to the next one. So, by the way, these are 13, 14, and 15 for the year. Um, so we are missing number 16. I don't know if there's going to be another case another assortment or if we're just not going to see number 16 for the year there's been a lot of supply chain issues across various different model and toy manufacturers you guys know that that's no surprise to any of us so i don't know if 16 was canceled or they didn't get the license for it or maybe we'll just see it later on in the year i have no idea but it was not with this assortment this one as i said we have seen numerous numerous times this is the gmc 3500 attenuator truck this is the exact same livery that we saw what was it, two, two years ago, 2019, when it was orange? It has highway services on the door. Since we've seen it in yellow, we've seen it with a white cab and a blue body. But it's nice to have just old-school DOT orange back. Personally, that's what I prefer. 
Uh, you guys know what this truck is used for. I'm, I'm sure most of you do, but if we have any new viewers that may not be familiar, these are obviously crash trucks that um, usually are deployed in work zones on highways or throughways. And the whole idea is this is a cushion for an impact zone. So where it says lane closed ahead, this would go down. And the idea is if there's some unsuspecting driver um, coming along, he would basically impact the rear cushion instead of hitting the workers in the work zone. So that's the whole idea of an attenuator truck. Obviously, you'd have pylons and other accessories in the back, too. Your aero board here, you can take this off. So if you don't want it facing to the left, that's not an issue. You pop it off and pop it back in, which is what I'm doing right now and you can have it facing to the right. I think that's kind of a neat little feature, something that you don't really expect when you're talking about Matchbox, but it's nice that they kind of did that. So trying to get mine to pop in here. Of course, it's not wanting to do it, but I know it goes in, so I do know that it goes in. There we go. We've got it in now. So now we have the arrow facing to the right. Okay, um, getting caught up on chat here. Yeah, the... Scraper is another one that was in this case, but we've already seen that this year in the Ranac livery. So I guess that was another placeholder. Maybe that was supposed to be the fourth one. Or I, I think in this assortment, if I remember correctly, to the Matchbox um, debut, like they did last August for the 2021 unveil for their product line, I thought there was supposed to be an aerial ladder truck in here for this mix. I could be wrong. If there's a Matchbox expert in here, please correct me. But maybe that's what was supposed to be in here, and they decided for one reason or another not to do it. Um, all right, let's keep going. We're already at seven minutes. Nathan says hello. Hello, Nathan. Thank you for joining us. We're just going over the latest batch of Matchbox Real Working Rigs. I will have a full-length review on this. Actually, the, the full-length review, to be honest with you, has already been filmed, and that has the unboxing of these. But I decided, you know what, I have some time. Let's go live, interact with you guys. Uh, Lewis says, hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, Lewis. Thanks for joining us. All right, so here's the last one. I think, honestly, this is my favorite of the three, basically because we haven't seen this one for a while. This is the Freightliner M2 satellite truck, or the news van for short, as I like to call it. Um, I bought two of these. This is obviously the bone stock model that you would get off of the card. And then I bought a second one that I spent a couple hours on. You guys have probably seen it on Instagram, and I th it was the thumbnail for this video, too. Um, I added a lot of uh, stuff to it, whether it's decaling, and we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but just focusing on this one, you have your two large satellite dishes, which you can spin and angle up. That's about the only thing that works on this, other than, of course, your rolling wheels. Almost exactly HO scale, 187 scale. So, again, another one for the model railroaders or the 187 scale truck community to pick up and this is a fantastic casting to customize whether you're doing a mobile command center for your fire or police department or uh, maybe for fema or ema or if you want to strip this down and do it in your own um, local news agency or maybe even cnn or msnbc colors that's another option that i can see people doing there's only a couple rivets the base is metal the body is plastic the cab is metal but you only have to drill out two rivets and uh, that's very easy to do. The only thing you have to worry about is cracking the front bumper part, which I actually did on mine, but I tried to hide it. So that is the the base model, MBTV Worldwide Streaming TV Service, number 30 on it for some reason or another. Here is mine that I have heavily customized. Um, I tried out this new chrome paint pen that I have, brought out the grill and the Freightliner logo, also, some lights and such on it. I don't know if we'll be able to do both of these. Um, changed out the wheels and tires so they look a little bit more realistic. Added some antennas on the mirrors. Uh, your running lights have been painted. Like I said, there's the crack in the bumper right here that I tried to hide with the license plate. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. You know, these are... I think there's at least two of these in the case because the store I was at had four of these hanging on the pegs. So my assumption is that they probably got two cases of this batch of working rigs, mix four, for 2021. Again, that's just an assumption. Um, but I don't know. Out of the three, this one is by far my favorite. So 
let's get caught up on chat. I don't know if anybody else has said anything since I was gone or not. Looks like emergency service says he's back. Welcome back. Guys, feel free to interact via the chat button. That's why we do these live videos. Um, ben says, what brand are the wheels on the custom one? That's a great question. So the wheels on the custom one, the wheels and tires, they're from a 187 scale Norscott Kenworth tractor. Um, I think it's a W900 that's been out for like 16 years. And I had a double of it laying around that I had a different project plan for it, but I decided, you know what, I will just uh, disassemble it and rob the wheels off of it for now. The good thing about those Norscott trucks, the 187 scale one, is they're, they're only assembled by screws. So if you ever want to disassemble it or you know reassemble it, all you have to do is take out a couple screws, so it's really easy to do. And if you change your mind, obviously you can switch it back. So that's the answer to your question. Ben, thank you for joining and thank you for asking. Um, the attenuator truck, the other one, we'll go ahead and get rid of this for now. The attenuator truck, I think, will probably, for most people, be the most popular. When this came out a couple years ago, it was almost impossible to find. I remember hearing horror stories from Matchbox collectors about how difficult this truck was. I think at the time there was only one of these in the case, too, for the orange one. And I don't know if I've mentioned this or not. I know I mentioned it in the review that I just filmed, but in this assortment, if you want to even call it that, in the box on the pegs, they had this one, which is new, obviously, uh, but they also had the old yellow one mixed in, too, that I think was a couple... Was it, wasn't it mixed two for this year? Maybe it might have been mixed one. I don't know. But basically, you get two attenuators, either the orange one or the yellow one. All right, guys. So anything else that you want to comment on these? If not, we will transition now to requests, which we'll spend the second half of this video doing. So if you guys are new and you're just joining me for a live session, what I do here is if you guys want to talk about anything diecast related this is your time so get your questions in now if you have some requests of some models that you know are in my collection that you want me to maybe bring out and show you within reason i will do that uh, i will try to do that anyway some models are easier to get to than others uh welcome blind guy the random blind guy is his screen name thank you for joining me big fan of the channel thanks for tuning in he asks what's the best website to get uh, mainline Hot Wheels and Matchbox from. Normally, I would go to... Uh, well, there's a couple websites, honestly. eBay is obviously the, the preferred because it's easiest. If you're looking for something in particular, you just go to eBay and you pop it in, but it's really expensive. If you're looking to buy cases of the latest stuff or pre-order cases of the latest stuff, I always recommend jcardiecast.com. That's the letter J, then cardiecast.com, all one word. Um, he's a good friend of mine in the community. He's helped out the channel a lot over the years. He's based in Texas, really good guy. I would recommend him a lot. Uh, Skull Gamer and Ethan Anderson have joined the chat. Welcome both of you. Um, Skull asks, do you have any model freight trains? You know, I do. Matter of fact, I have one that's within arm range. It's a static model that's within arm range, but I can bring it out, which actually kind of bring up a, a good point to talk about because within the past 24 hours while I'm getting this out uh, Diecast Masters has announced a 187 scale Caterpillar freight train set of the Progress Rail which is a Caterpillar company that will be hopefully I say hopefully because who knows with shipping and logistics hopefully available early part of next year but years ago they made something like this here's another Progress Rail uh, this is a EMD SD70 Ace T4 locomotive. Now, this is in 187 scale. It is not functional at all. It is simply meant to be a uh, display model. But I do like showing this, particularly if you have a static railroad or a display. You can hook up train cars to this. So I kind of like to display this with flat cars with cat equipment. But this is one that I have within range so you can buy one of these on any of the diecast masters dealer websites so any of your any of your favorite diecast masters websites like 3000 toys anything like those they should have it 
Uh, that's how you can get one, Skull Gamer. That's how you answer your question. All right, another question as chat just randomly disappears. That's one thing I hate about live is that the chat randomly pops up and then it'll disappear. Can you bring out your favorite mainline Hot Wheel and your favorite mainline Matchbox? Uh, current or of all time? Let me know and then I will. So, because there's a, there's a big, big difference there. But yeah, just to put a period on the question previously, any of the authorized Diecast Masters websites or eBay, obviously, just type in what you're looking for. You should not have an issue finding any of those. But the train set, though, the one that's coming out next year, 2022, looks pretty good. It's got a couple flat cars with cat equipment. I think there's a rail excavator and a grader, uh, a tank car, and then a box car as well. So... Where are we on questions? We're doing okay on time. Again, those that are joining us, thank you for joining us, me for the live session. You can get your questions in on anything diecast related. Doesn't just have to be Matchbox or Hot Wheels. I'll put a couple of these on the screen so you guys aren't looking at anything or at nothing rather. Um, so yeah, get your questions in. So Wine Guy says current. Okay, so favorite current Matchbox casting. Oh boy. Um, is the international pumper current or did they, they discontinue that? I'd say the international pumper would be my favorite current casting, which I have 30 of those somewhere hiding. Here we go. Here's an example of one. So this is probably my favorite current matchbox casting. Um, my favorite Hot Wheels casting, and that's tough, going to be either a Mercedes or a Toyota, so let's go with, let's go with the 72 Mercedes-Benz 280 SEL. There you go. That's my favorite current Matchbox and current Hot Wheels casting, although, of course, these change very frequently. What year was this? You guys know what year the International Pumper first came out? I know, I, I was a kid. 1998. Yeah, so it's been out for a while. I was so excited when this thing came out because back in the day, there really wasn't a good example of just an engine or a pumper. Um, Hot Wheels like had this, the Fire Eater, which was a fantasy cab over version of what they thought an engine looked like. But it wasn't very realistic. And again, you guys, long-term collectors, will know exactly what I'm talking about. But when Matchbox unveiled this in 98, 99, oh, I was stoked. I was like, we finally have one um, of a regular engine, of a, of a decent pumper. And I was so happy with it. Uh, Union Pacific has joined the chat. Hello, welcome. Make sure you can get your questions in. We are talking anything diecast or scale model world related. By the way, if I didn't thank you, thank you, Random Blind Guy, for your question. That was a fantastic question. Let me see if I missed any other questions while you guys are getting your questions into us. I like to do this because, uh, I, number one, I love interacting with you guys in real time. I think it's a great way to join, to uh, grow the channel and uh, you know answer your guys' questions. Figure out what you guys are into, what you're not into, what you like, what you don't like. You know, I, I want to kind of be one of those, I don't necessarily label myself as a YouTuber, but a content creator on YouTube that is readily available to his fan base at any time. So he says, sweet. Well, there you go. Um, probably my favorite working rigs casting is, and that changes too. Like, I, I like the Western Star Wrecker. The heavy tow truck. I like the aerial ladder truck. Like this. Um, there's so many good ones. There's so many good real working rigs. I'd say the aerial ladder truck. The vac truck. Which is this one. We're running out of space here. Aerial ladder truck. Vac truck. Um, even the grader's good. Here's my uh, Western Star Heavy Wrecker. One of these three, depending on the day, <laughs> depending on what mood I'm in, it's one of those three. 
All right. Um, Union Pacific asks, is there a picture out for the train set? Yes, there is. So if you can, if, if you have a Facebook account, uh, visit the Diecast Masters Facebook page. And they have, I think it's four or five pictures of the set and further information on it. And at some point this weekend, if I remember, I will post those same pictures on my Instagram account. Uh, yes, the Poop King is, uh, yeah, it, it's a very, it's a very uh, interesting casting. I heard, though, and I it's not a very reliable source, but I heard somewhere that Matchbox is discontinuing the Poop King and the, the, uh, line painting truck because i heard there was so many complaints from parents one the line painting truck where where the kids were putting crayons in it and writing on parents walls which i kind of knew that was going to happen and then the poop king with it being a choking hazard and a piece that separates so i don't know if that's true it's not from a very reliable source that i heard that rumor so i didn't really buy into it it makes sense when you think about it but uh, i don't i don't know if that's actually happening wouldn't surprise me though if it does Okay. Um, Union Pacific guy says, thank you. All right, so we'll go here for maybe another 10 minutes or so. Try and keep this one around a half hour. Again, thank you to all of you guys that are tuning in for this. I know it's a Friday afternoon, so it's not an optimal time for... It's not an optimal time for most of us. Um, but anytime I get a chance to do this, I like to try and do it. Any more questions? Anything else you guys want to see? Uh, blind guy, why does green light have such awful quality control? That's a very good question. I don't know. I don't know why green light has awful quality control, but I've unfortunately been a victim of, of that on more than one occasion. And uh, I, I, I have no answers for you. As a matter of fact, this is a project that I tried to tidy up uh this is a what is this 2019 pro master ram so this was one of their root runner series when i got this thing this had like glue all the way throughout the interior of this on the window all the way down the paint so what i did was i took some wd-40 and tried to rub most of it out you can still see that there's a lot of residue but this looks about two thousand percent better than it did now this is a very minor issue compared to some other stories i've heard you know wheels missing wheels that have fallen off uh paint chipping and flaking just things that are absolutely missing so i don't know i have no idea i'm not going to make any excuses for green light but everybody has quality control issues it's not just one company all the diecast company does and you got to think about it you know when most of the stuff is made overseas they make it in an overseas factory it's put on a boat that gets shipped across the ocean gets put in the port you know usually on the west coast and then trucked across the country things are bound to happen it's just logistics again not making any excuses but it is what it is all right ethan anderson asks do you know any canadian dealers to get diecast i don't know any canadian dealers i don't have any contacts in canada wish i did but um all the dealers that i know of i i'm pretty sure shipped to canada so if you're familiar with constructiondiecast.com, that's my good friend Drew. Check him out. Fairly certain he ships to Canada. So check him out. That's constructiondiecast.com. He has all the Diecast Master stuff, Ertl stuff, First Gear, Universal Hobbies, uh, DCP. I think he even has uh, some, fir or some, not First Gear, some classic construction models stuff now. I think he's, I think I've convinced him to go off the deep end. So, yeah, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you for saying thank you. All right, guys, let's go for about five more minutes. Get your questions or suggestions in. Uh, what else can I show you that I haven't that's close? Maybe it can generate some conversation here. Wasn't really that prepared, honestly, for today that I normally am. Just figured we'd go over the real working rigs and see where the conversation took us. Um, let's see. Have you guys seen these yet? These have been out for a while. Uh, these are Tomica. Well, U.S. Tomica. 
uh, this is an Isuzu. This is a Suzuki truck. Kind of cool. I found these at Walmart um, about a week or so ago. Don't know why the camera is not focusing, but yeah, thought they were pretty cool. I don't collect Tomica stuff at all. I don't plan on it, um, but they were trucks. I happen to be a truck guy. They were heavily clearanced, so I was like, you know what? I'll pick them up and check it out. I have to be honest. I'm not that impressed with the with the detail on here, but you know, it's kind of interesting. I mean, you have a Isuzu cab over truck pulling a French fry trailer. How cool is that? Uh, American GG potato, Gia potato, something like that. I don't know. Kind of fun. Definitely a lot of play value for the kids. Not something that collectors, I think, will buy into too much. And then this one, uh, Suzuki Carry Mobile catering truck. Again, same thing. Heavily, heavily clearanced. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even taken a second look at it. But this is just a small little box truck. You know, but at first glance, it says kebab shop, number one kebabs. But check this out. Kind of opens. Gives you a little guy in there like a food truck. Flops back down. It's only the one side that pops open, but kind of neat. I definitely think kids will buy into it for sure. I don't understand why they're like six ninety nine normally. I, I don't know where Tomica gets um, <laughs> gets that price range from on these. I really don't, especially for these. But they're halfway decent, I suppose. All right, a few more minutes left, and then we'll end this live stream. Looks like we got um, about six or seven people still in here with us. So, again, thank you guys for tuning in. I know, again, it's a Friday afternoon, so not a lot of people are available for this one. But I was here for a few minutes, figured I'd pop on, give you guys another opportunity to interact. Um, did I get the J da Gasser from Matchbox? I didn't. I have not gotten it yet because I haven't found it anywhere. I probably will if I see it. I'll tell you the one I really want. I, I honestly, I could go here nor there on the Gasser, but the one I really want is that blue Mercedes. Looks very similar to this with the opening doors out of the collector line. That's the one. Um, that's the one I'm really trying to track down. Uh, Flat Moon, do you have an excavator with a chain hook extension? Uh, I have a bucket that has a little hook on it that you can throw a chain hook extension on it. I definitely can do I, I, I can do that, but I don't have an excavator that actually came with a chained extension. I, I don't have an excavator that actually came with a chain with it, but I do have a bucket that has a little loop on the back of it. Some of the old diecast or some of the old Norscot. 330s, 336s, head buckets like that. Ethan, do you remember Taguchi Excavator I told you that we were getting? I do, yes. Uh, Viva Diecast Emporium. Uh, hello. Thank you. Um, ben asks if he can figure out my favorite CCM 187 scale model. Well, that's uh, we went over that on one of the other live streams, but go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, Ethan says he got the Taguchi. Nice. Very nice. And yes, you are correct. The Cat PM465 is my favorite CCM 187 scale cat model. Uh, we went over that in the last live stream where we covered the entire collection of um, cat CCM models, which if you guys have not seen that, highly, highly, highly suggest watching that video. You, will, you won't find that anywhere else on the internet where you see all 29 castings that CCM has done over the past 30-some years all in one place in a half-hour video. Pretty cool. All right, so we'll go for about 30 seconds more. So if you guys have any more important questions or anything else you want to ask me, send them right now. We're going to try and end this close to a half hour as possible. Got a few other things I'd like to do before it gets too late. Uh, if you are interested, that Real Working Rigs video, that'll probably go live here later on tonight. So if you want to see the unboxing and the actual proper video of that, um, check it out. 
Hey, Lewis. I don't know when uh, Luis. I don't know when Greenlight is going to release a bus. I have absolutely no idea. Hopefully, they will do it soon. I'm really surprised that they haven't, since they're so into doing Hollywood things like Hollywood vehicles. I um, I'm I'm really surprised that they have not done a speed bus from the movie Speed. You know, that was released a number of years ago. I'm very surprised that, that that they have not done that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. As always, thank you for tuning in. And uh, until next time, take care. Be safe. I will see you in the next Diecast Emporium review.